From CapKview Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning and thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, March 31st. I'm Neil Fisher. We are at the end of March. We had a beautiful day yesterday and Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls joins us this morning. And Kristen, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day again yes, today. If you enjoyed yesterday, you're certainly going to enjoy today. Head outside and bask in all of that sunshine. <laughs> so, but cold start this morning. Let's talk about that forecast for today. Live look, you could start, we're starting to see a little bit as a hint of daylight outside right now as the sun's coming up. No, not a cloud in sight. We're looking at temperatures once again, very, very cold this morning. We're down into the 20s for portions of the Tri-Cities. Still a little bit warmer there in Walla Walla, relatively speaking at 38. 28 in Hermiston, mid 20s for uh, Ellensburg and Yakima and Cleelum. Good morning to you. You're sitting in at 27. But clear and quiet around the Pacific Northwest. That ridge of high pressure is still in place. Not a whole lot of changes today, except for those temperatures are only going to continue to climb. So it's 59 degrees at lunchtime, 67 for your Wednesday afternoon. So we still have some 70s ahead, but we're also looking uh, ahead to our next wind chance. I'll have your full forecast, Neil. It's coming up. All right, thank you, Kristen. An emotional warning from the director of the CDC after the latest numbers show a steady rise in COVID-19 cases across the country. Airline travel hit the highest point of the pandemic on Sunday. TSA says it screened more than 1.5 million people at airports. Air travel figures continue to ride high during this spring break period, even as health experts fret over rising coronavirus infection rates in some states. The director of the CDC says she's worried about a fourth surge in cases and vowed to encourage governors directly to buckle down on reopening their states too quickly. I'm asking you to just hold on a little longer to get vaccinated when you can so that all of those people that we all love will still be here when this pandemic ends. Dr. Walensky says even with the three vaccines authorized for use in the U.S., the fight against COVID-19 will be slower if there's another surge. And this brings us to our poll question of the day. Are you concerned about a possible fourth wave of coronavirus cases? You can vote now at yaktrynews.com vote and on our CapKview app, and we'll have those results at the end of the show. Two companies that teamed up on a COVID vaccine are now promising to get more doses out to the public. Pfizer and BioNTech say they are now hoping to manufacture 2.5 billion doses of their vaccine by the end of this year. The companies will start a phase three trial in the U.S. on a freeze-dried version of its next vaccine next month. This as the U.S. continues its push to get people vaccinated. The CDC reports at full vaccination, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were both 90% effective at preventing infections. Teachers concerned about the safety of classrooms demonstrated in front of Franklin High School yesterday. The same day, district officials conducted a walkthrough and final inspection of classrooms. Seattle Education Association claims the district only tested the HVAC vent systems in 11 of the classrooms and three of the rooms failed the tests. The chief of operating officials for Seattle Public Schools says more steps have been taken to improve airflow. One middle school teacher in West Seattle says she plans to hold some of her classes outside. Ventilation in our beautiful brand new building is basically recycling the air from other classes into another class and another class. Our windows do not open wide like in the old building. Meanwhile, many parents are confident that it's safe for everyone to return to the classroom. Parents feel that their children are safe in these schools. Children are not being killed by COVID when they go back to schools, irrespective of ventilation. I feel um, I feel that it's a disservice to focus on HVAC right now rather than getting these children back into the classrooms. Seattle Public Schools says that they are using multiple layered mitigation strategies to meet public health recommendations. Yesterday, President Biden signed an extension to the Paycheck Protection Program, which makes it so small businesses have until the end of May to apply for help. The original deadline was today. The extension also means the Small Business Administration has until the end of June to finish proce process proce processing tens of thousands of applications. Nearly 90,000 businesses are still in line and uh, there's money left. Without somebody signing this bill today, there are hundreds of thousands of people who could lose their jobs and small family businesses that might close forever. 
The Paycheck Protection Program deadline offers loans to small businesses to help them stay afloat during the pandemic, but those loans can be forgiven as long as the money goes to specific costs like keeping workers on payroll, rent, and utility bills. Now, the Gonzaga Bulldogs at the NC2A Basketball Tournament. Brought to you by Toyota. Save big all March during Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event. Toyota, let's go places. When the NCAA tournament got shut down a year ago, many of us thought Gonzaga just missed their chance to win a national championship. They were the odds-on favorite in Las Vegas to win the entire thing, and they never got an opportunity to try to fight for that title. Enter 2021. Gonzaga enters the season ranked number one. They were number one the entire season. They're undefeated, now 30-0, headed back to the Final Four, just two wins away from history. You better believe they're excited about what's ahead. Oh man, just uh, just an awesome, awesome feeling to uh, be able to fight our way back to another uh, Final Four. Uh, guys came out and just played with just tremendous energy and, and toughness and, and uh, you know, on both ends of the floor. And just getting to this point is extremely special. Uh, you know, we're going to celebrate it, but uh, we got two more, uh, you know, that we need to get done. And we're taking them one game at a time. Drew Timmy, Corey Kispert, Jalen Suggs, all making the all-region team. Drew Timmy, the most outstanding player, as he should be. He absolutely dominated the last three games for Gonzaga. And nobody seems to have an answer for that mustache. And I've heard a rumor. It's not a rumor. His father told me straight to my face he will wear the handlebar mustache in the next round of the NCAA tournament. Zag's got two wins to go. We'll see what they can do coming up on Saturday. But for now, it's just about celebrating getting back to the Final Four. And as for who the Zags will be playing Saturday, last night 11th seeded UCLA Bruins upset top seeded Michigan to earn their place in the Final Four. The matchup was a tight back and forth battle that came down to the last second of play. The Wolverines had one possession with just .5 seconds on the clock, but the catch and shoot attempt clanked off the rim, sending the Bruins onward in the tournament. UCLA, which was one of the last four at-large teams selected to the NCAA tournament, became the first team since VCU in 2011 to advance from the first four to the final four. An official collapsed yesterday evening in the first half of the game between Gonzaga and USC. According to the broadcast, official Burt Smith was feeling lightheaded while on the court. Video shows Smith standing in a corner of the court by the Gonzaga bench when he goes down backward without being able to use his arms to break his fall. He was taken off on a stretcher and appeared to be talking to a man walking beside him. Standby official Tony Henderson replaced Smith and the game resumed. According to an NCAA spokesperson, Burt is alert and stable and will not be transported to a hospital. He has been in contact with his family. At 6.06, let's take a quick break here on Good Morning Northwest. Before we do, Kristen, it's still chilly outside, but the sun's coming up. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day today. Get ready for a nice warm-up. What does it look like as we head into the first couple days of April? We'll have the full forecast. It's coming up. Plus, thousands of fans will be able to cheer the Mariners on in person starting this week. We'll show you the changes at T-Mobile Park designed to keep everyone safe. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. 9,000 fans will be able to watch the Mariners in person when they take on the Giants tomorrow. And changes at T-Mobile Park go beyond a smaller home crowd. The gates open two hours before the game to try and thin the crowds even more and allow for social distancing. Tickets are digital only. You can't pay for cash. You can't pay cash at concessions. And there are new metal detectors so you can keep your phone and keys in your pocket. You're also not allowed to bring bags anymore unless it's a medical necessity or a diaper bag. One fan says he's just excited to watch the game in person no matter what restrictions are in place. We're really, we're really excited. I didn't think we were going to get a ticket, but you know, it really works out. Sometimes it feels like it's a little over the top some of the protocols but you've got to understand like times like this you know people are dying people are getting sick um, and you know they've got to do what they've got to do thousands of fans feel the same way the first few games are already sold out coming up on good morning northwest we'll hear from local first responders on what it's been like to work in a hospital during the pandemic Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. We continue our new series called Working Past COVID. What's the new normal? We've heard the stories of hard work and heroism inside our hospitals, nurses and doctors working tirelessly to treat COVID-19 patients. 
Our Madeline Hagen met with a nurse from Cadillac Regional Medi Medical Center and their chief executive who share what it's really been like working on the front line. Let's go back to March 2020. People in the United States are becoming ill and hospitals nationwide are preparing for the unknown. We designated the COVID units. We started the training. It's initially just trying to gather as much information as you can. Lead nurse Jennifer Van Dyken works with the sickest patients on Cadillac's acute floor. She says as they prepared, staff couldn't help but feel afraid. We went through the, the gamut of emotions, you know, being afraid of what it was, being afraid of coming to work, being afraid of taking it home or into our community. Still, workers persevered against a virus that didn't fit the mold. They weren't all the same. They didn't present the same. They didn't heal the same. We were, you know, really on alert for any symptom. Cadillac's chief executive, Riza Khalil, says they do have emergency plans and staff know how to handle infectious disease patients. But the pandemic has been different. Again, we're used to doing, but not on this large of a scale. So it was, it was to some extent, scaling infectious disease practices across the whole organization. Khalil says it's been important to disseminate correct information, normalize new practices and keep staff healthy. Programs for uh, mental health and support that they have access to and then financial support early on when we didn't know, you know, where things were going and people were affected in different ways. While many patients were sent home to recover, Van Dyken says there was death exacerbated by pandemic protocol. People did die alone and that was tough. It was it was emotionally tough. I still don't know how we would deal with it. It's just something that we had to do. Both Jennifer and Risa say they're extremely proud of the hard work from their co-workers. There's a certain amount of grit and, and sacrifice that I, I can't thank our staff enough for. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And when questioned if they think we'll return to normal, this was the nurse's answer. A new normal. I think it I think will forever be changed. We'd like to give a huge thank you to all the nurses and doctors and medical staff who've been fighting against the COVID-19 pandemic. We know it's not over and your hard work has, been, has not gone unnoticed or unappreciated. The Justice Department has launched a 30-day review of how to better combat hate crimes. It will examine how the DOJ can, quote, deploy all the tools at its disposal to combat hate crimes across the nation. It comes on the heels of a spike in hate crimes and incidents, especially against the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Attorney General Merrick Garland sent a memo to all DOJ employees Tuesday listing eight items he wants the department to review and consider. Two areas targeted for improvement are tracking of reported hate crimes that might violate federal law and enhancing the available tools to respond to hate crimes. The office of former President Trump released a statement announcing the launch of Trump and former First Lady Melania's website. The site, named the official website of the 45th President of the United States, serves mostly as a way to connect with his supporters. It gives supporters the chance to do things like request personalized greetings and ask the Trumps to participate in events. According to the site, it's committed to, quote, preserving the magnificent legacy of the Trump administration while at the same time advancing the America First agenda. It also has the president and first lady's biographies and lists Trump's achievements in office. Now, Cap gave you first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls, sponsored by Click It RV Tri Cities. And what a great way to end uh, this month of March. We're going to be heading into April. Beautiful weather, beautiful yesterday. Nothing but uh, some sun is expected this morning as the sunrise is set for just about 20 minutes or so from now at 638. Sunset at 724. So with all this warm weather, we've been getting some beautiful uh, springtime flowers in here. This is from Kim Casey from Grandview. You can see the, the bunny that's hopping around in the garden there as well, but some beautiful tulips and other flowers that she already has planted. So we of course, want to see your photos. You can head over to yattrynews.com at the very top of the menu, and then we could be showing your photo right here on Good Morning Northwest. So show those, show us those photos and those uh, beautiful flowers that are popping up possibly in your backyard or your neighborhood. But temperatures early this morning. If you do have flowers that are planted outdoors, not the best news here with numbers below freezing. We're at 25 right now in the Tri-Cities, 38 in Walla Walla. Connell this morning at 28 in those mid-20s over into Yakima and also for Ellensburg. And 
And we have wind uh, that will be fairly light for today, but this will be changing up as we head into the next couple of days. So for your Thursday, we could be talking about some wind gusts as high as about 25 miles per hour. So today's just going to be a beautiful day to enjoy. Nothing that we have here on the radar and satellite. Still pretty clear and quiet on the uh, as we zoom out here on the Pacific Northwest. So here's future cast again this afternoon. Numbers today climbing up into the upper 60s. For your Thursday, this will be our warmest day. Maybe a few clouds drifting in here, but a very weak front. This is what's going to create those winds to pick up at times. Uh, but no rain associated with it. We'll be back into the 60s for your Friday. And I think as we head into the weekend for your Easter weekend, for both Saturday and Sunday, we'll have a few more clouds drifting in here. Temperatures that will still be in the 60s. So highs out there for the next couple of days. Again, we'll see that nice warm up. We're going to be into the uh, mid 70s for tomorrow. Upper 60s Friday and Saturday. And then there's Sunday up to 70 degrees. So overall, these temperatures will be above average. So numbers out there for this afternoon, 65 degrees in Yakima, 58 degrees in Cleelum, 67 today. Tri-Cities, mid-60s from Hermiston into Prosser, and then over into Walla Walla with a high of 65. So overnight tonight, we'll have that clear sky once again. Numbers should be dipping down to right around that freezing mark. So your seven-day forecast for the Tri-Cities, the breezy conditions tomorrow and up to 75. But as we head into Easter weekend, we'll have just a few more clouds. 70 degrees there on Sunday, a rain chance or two by early next week and your seven day forecast for Yakima also enjoying lots of some sunshine bit breezy tomorrow 65 on Friday more 60s over the weekend we'll be right back with much more after the break now wine Wednesday sponsored by the lodge at Columbia Point and welcome back yes it's wine Wednesday which means it's time for a hundred percent chance of wine JJ and Kelly Mendoza have such a beautiful story to share. They met as Air Force pilots serving our country for 23 years, and now they are thankful for the opportunity to pursue a second dream, to cultivate, create, and share the wines they love with the Louvet Winery. We looked probably over five to seven years at different pieces of property, and when we saw this uh, piece of property for the first time, we were just stunned at the great view that it has as we were looking at this basically and it already had vines on this side so we had a good idea that it had been old horse pasture so it didn't have a lot of pesticide issues and that it might be a good piece of ground we were also fortunate to have a good friend uh, kenny hart who actually farms a vineyard for us uh, and he was able to go around with us at every piece of land that we looked at and we'd always drag him around and say can we grow grapes here and when he saw this spot and already was farming the the lot next door he said yeah i think this mm -hmm. would work for you so be sure to tune in to, uh, tonight to Cap KVU Local News at 5 p.m. Uh, for the full story with uh, JJ. Now it's time for our 100% chance of wine giveaway. Be the first person to email me and you will win a tasting for four with the winemakers, both JJ and Kelly, along with light hors d'oeuvres. You must be at least 21 years or old to enter. And for those that are looking just to stop by a Louvre, be sure to mention 100% chance of wine for a 10% discount along with a free tasting. All right, let's switch gears now to your reason to smile. Take a look at these two best buddies early this morning. Uh, certainly snuggling up. This is Buzz and Winston. I love the <laughs> sizes there. Like, I don't know who's, who's Buzz and Winston, but that little guy, I'm sure he's comfortable just laying on top of the big guy. Oh, my gosh, that is amazing. That's so cute. They're so adorable. They're probably best friends, too. Yep, no, they certainly are. So thank you to Deborah Crane for submitting this photo. If you have your reason to smile, head over to yakchinese.com. We have a photos of the day section to submit your photos there. Definitely. Thank you, Kristen. Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, a huge clean energy proposal is facing backlash from people here in the Tri-Cities. We are hearing their concerns. And at 626, beautiful start to your day. Very frigid start, though. We're talking numbers. And when we'll see some 70s returning, I'll have your full forecast coming up during the 6.30 half hour.